Hi everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to import and export text content from your Figma designs using CSV files. And we're going to do this by installing a plugin called CopyDoc. So if you haven't already installed it, you can jump into the Figma community and search for the term CopyDoc. So that's C-O-P-Y-D-O-C. And under the plugins tab, you will see a result come up called CopyDoc. And if you go over to the right hand side, you'll be able to click on the install button. And once it says installed, then you're ready to go and we can jump back into our Figma design. So I'm just going to be using this Figma file to give you an example of what it looks like to import and export text content from Figma using CSVs. And the first thing we need to do is just right click anywhere, go down to plugins and then click on copy doc. And that's just going to fire up the plugin that we just installed a moment ago. So you'll notice that there's a few different settings here. Um, but for today, we're just going to be focusing on importing and exporting CSV. So just using these two options. So the first thing we need to do in order to edit the content is to export all of our Figma text layers to CSV. And the way we can do that is just by clicking on this button over here, which says export CSV. So once that loads, it's going to load in all of the different Figma frames that you've got at a parent level. So all of your top level frames on the current page will get loaded into this window. And this essentially just allows you to select which frames you want to export the text from. Um, so by default, it will select every single frame in your document. Um, but if you want to narrow that down, there's a couple of different ways to do it. The first way is just to uncheck all the layers or check uncheck individual layers and you'll see that you'll be selecting a subset of those layers. So for example, if I only wanted these seven, I could do that. Another easier way if you know which frames you want to uh, export is you can just click on those frames in your design and you can select multiple ones and that will automatically filter down those, those frames in the plugin itself. So if we only wanted to export these three, uh, we could quite easily just click on those and you'd see those three filter. Uh, you can unselect all the frames just to get the whole list back. And for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just going to export all of these frames in one go to CSV. So let's go ahead and do that now. Um, we can just click on this export CSV button up here. So I'll click on that. And this is going through and exporting every single text layer in our frames to a zip file. So it's telling us that the Figma text layers are ready to download. So I'm going to click on the download text button and just save that to my desktop. And if I double click on that zip file, you'll see we get a folder which contains my CSV file and it contains a folder called frames. And that frames folder is there because I selected the include designs option. So what that means is it's going to include references to all of your frames in the zip file. So you can see here, if I navigate through those, it's including a, a file for every single frame that I chose to export. And that's just a nice um, touch to be able to reference the designs from the CSV, even if you're not accessing the Figma file directly. Um, so to give you an example of what the CSV looks like, I'm just going to double click on the CSV file and this is going to open up Apple Numbers. Um, that's my default app on this computer. Yours might be Microsoft Excel or you could open it in Google Sheets and that would be another option. Um, but for today, I'm just going to be showing you the Apple Numbers app. Okay, so we can see here it's loaded up the CSV file that we exported from Figma. And if you have a look closely, you can see that we've got a few columns here. So we've got the ID column. So this is a column that you don't want to be editing. Um, this is what's going to map the text layers back into Figma when we re-import them. So you can just not worry about that ID column. The frame column is a reference to what frame the text is being included on. So for example, we've got the intro frame here. And you can see that on the intro frame, we've got three layers of text. So we've got Dieter Rams, 10 principles of good design, and then this little snapshot here as well. So we've got those three little lines and the same thing goes for all of the other frames. So you can see all the frame references and that just makes it really easy to visually verify what's going on. Um, and the other thing to note is that it will essentially go from top to bottom. So the text layers will be ordered from top to bottom. So you can see here in this intro frame, we've got Dieter Rams, 10 principles for good design, and then this little tagline at the bottom. 
and that's because the order of those uh, top to bottom in the design itself um, it also takes into account left to right um, as well so for example we've got good design is innovative uh, the possibilities for good design uh, or innovation uh, is the second one and then we've got this little footer down here as well so those uh, are a little bit of an example of, uh, of what they look like um, you can see over here we've actually got these numbers which are getting aligned to the right um, I believe that's just because they're being recognized as numbers by the program um, but if you're wondering where those were they're just sitting over the right hand side so that's probably more of a Apple numbers specific thing Okay, so now that we've got our CSV file with all of the text from Figma, uh, we can actually go and edit that text content right now. So for example, if we wanted to change this, um, this title frame here, so instead of 10 principles, maybe we want to say two principles for some reason. And instead of dear to Rams, uh, I'm just going to put my own name there. Uh, I'll put my last name in there as well. And the other cool thing we can do is actually just find and replace. So you can do this in any spreadsheet software, um, but if you actually just do a find, so if you wanted to do um, good design, if you wanted to find that sentence, and for some reason you wanted to replace that with uh, bad design, uh, you can do that and you can click replace all. And you can see here it's changed all of those references in our document. So if that was the change I wanted to make and I wanted to re-import these changes back into Figma from the CSV, what I can do is I can save the file as a CSV. So I'm just going to export it to CSV. I'm going to click next and I'm just going to save that onto my desktop. So I'm just going to say updated so I know which one. Okay, so I've just updated the CSV with all of my Figma text, and now we're gonna actually re-import that into Figma. So all we need to do is close off this little success message here in the plugin, and this time, instead of clicking on export, we're gonna look at the import text updates from Figma. So this is gonna update the Figma text from the CSV. So if you go ahead and click on the import CSV button, you'll see this little prompt to either click or drag and drop a CSV file and it's just letting us know that we should ensure that the CSV was originally exported from the CopyDoc plugin, otherwise it's probably not gonna work. Okay, so if I go back to my desktop, we can see here we've got the new updated CSV file that we just edited. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click and drag that into the plugin, and I'm gonna drop it into that little drop zone. Okay, so it's just loaded in the CSV file, so it's read through all of our rows in the CSV uh, that we exported from Figma and it's actually giving us a list of all the differences it's detected. So it's gone ahead and verified every single row in the CSV file and it's comparing those rows with the text that's currently in Figma based on the IDs that we exported from in the first place. And it's actually giving us diffs, so visual diffs of what's going to change were we to update these layers. So it doesn't, it doesn't update them immediately. It'll always let you verify the updates that you want to make from the file, just so you know exactly what's going to be changed. And you can opt out of any changes that you actually don't want to approve. So in this case, it's detected 13 changes that we made. So you'll, you'll recall that we changed D to Rams to my name. And then we also did a big find and replace where we changed every reference of good design to bad design. Um, and so you can see here, all of the diffs are showing that difference. So it's keeping the D at the end of good, but it's changing the first letters to be now bad. So you can visually see in the red on the left of the original text and what it's gonna look like when that text gets updated. So in this case, I wanna keep all of the changes except for the 10 principles of good design getting changed to two principles. So I'm gonna leave that one out. Um, and to verify where these are in the design, you can easily do that by clicking on the little uh, magnifying glass icon or the search icon next to any of these layers. And so doing so, as you can see here, it actually zooms in automatically to where that change is going to be made were you to accept it. Um, so you can go through all of the layers to verify where all these changes are actually happening. And that's just a really quick and easy way to verify uh, any text changes that are gonna be made without you realizing uh, where they might be. So that's just a really neat feature that you can use before you actually go ahead and click the update button. 
So having said that, I'm pretty happy with all of these updates that we're going to be making. As I said, I'm selecting 12 out of the 13. So now that I'm happy with all of those, I'm going to go ahead and click on Update Figma Text Layers. So this is now updating, or has already just updated, 12 layers. So it's told us that 12 Figma layers have just been updated. And if we actually go through, we can see in the list here that all of them, except for this bottom layer, which we didn't want to update, has been updated. So you've got this little confirmation icon, the little check mark, and in brackets at the end of each string, it's got updated in brackets. So it's confirmed that it's updated all the layers. And again, you can still use these magnifying glasses and we can actually cruise around the file and see exactly what was changed. Um, it's just a really easy way to verify what actually happened. And you can see here, we've changed every single layer, you know, within a matter of a couple of seconds. So that's pretty neat. And uh, if we wanted to undo that, the quickest way to do that would just be to do um, a Command-Z or a Control-Z on Windows. So for example, I can do Command-Z and it immediately undoes all of those text changes, um, which, is, which is great. If you, if you accidentally did the update and you didn't really mean to, then a Control-Z or a Command-Z um, will get, get you back there uh, pretty easily. So again, now that we've reversed those, we can easily re-import them just as easy as we did. So I'm just going to drag that back in. And this time I'll accept all the changes, including the bottom one. And once again, I'll just click Update Figma Text Layers. So that's going to replace all of the text from the CSV that we modified um, into Figma. So I'll show you that one more time and click on Update Figma Text Layers. And there we go. Two seconds later, we've got 13 text layers updated super easily. Um, so this is a really, really nice way of bulk updating content in a design just by editing a CSV file that you've exported from Figma. Um, so if you have a copywriting team or if you have uh, some external stakeholders that need to review copy, um, exporting the copy or the text from Figma to a CSV can be a really, really convenient way to get a quick overview of every single bit of text that's being used in your design um, or just on specific frames that you need to run past your legal department or run past a client um, for approval. And again, if you're a copywriter, um, oftentimes it's a lot more, um, a lot easier to actually edit that copy in an isolated fashion in a, you know, a Word document or a, um, a spreadsheet or a Google sheet. And so being able to export all of the, your text from Figma um, to that CSV file that they can edit on their own without disrupting the design process. Um, that's actually a preferable way to go a lot of the time. And then you as the designer or as a copywriter, you can quite easily just jump back here as we've just seen and re-import all those copy updates and review them before they actually go into the design, just in case there's any crazy, you know, huge amounts of text that are going to break the design, you'll be able to verify that before you actually go ahead and re-import it. Okay, so that's uh, that's basically everything you need to know about exporting and importing CSV content uh, via Figma um, using the copy.plugin. plugin. Uh, if you've got a copywriting team or if you're having issues with managing your text in Figma, then exporting and importing CSV files uh, using the Figma text might be something that you can try. And if you do, I hope you have some success with it. And we'll be back soon with more tutorials just like this one. So thank you again for watching and we'll see you soon.